Hey guys, MC Fix here. I'm going to show you how to put in a drive shaft slash CV axle in a 2006 Honda Ridgeline. Should work for a lot of the other Ridgelines in the first generation and a lot of other Honda bigger vehicles. Um, both the front right and front left drive shaft slash CV axles uh, does take some tools and supplies. I'll walk you through all that and the exact know-how on how to get this project done. So for the CV slash drive axle, um, you're going to want to jack jack stands, um, some kind of block, um, a couple of different types of hammer, maybe a sledgehammer. You're going to need one of these, this little pickle fork for getting the ball joint off. Uh, some kind of breaker bar is really helpful as well. Um, you'll need a 19, 17, 19 uh, millimeter, possibly a one inch if you changed out your tie rod and you need to take off your tie rod. Uh, a couple of torque sticks, torque wrenches, flathead. I also had to use about a 24 inch flathead as well, a ratchet, um, you'll need a 17, a 19, and a 22 millimeter, and a 36 millimeter. Um, some penetrating oil does help, you may have to take off at least one cotter pin, maybe two cotter pins, so you will want some uh, type of pliers for that, paper towels. Um, I am using a impact gun and the lug nuts are 22. And so I do have a torque stick as well. Uh, then the parts themselves, so these CV axles are a 95-6238. This is a Napa rebuilt. And so this one is for the front left. Uh, then the only difference in number is it is a, um, for the front right is a four at the end. So it'd be a 95-6284 for the front right. And so that's in this box right here. Um, and they do give you a new nut for the front and so you can discard the old nut if you would like You also need a crowbar oil pan and tie rod puller So I'm gonna go ahead and show you kind of my workspace. I have tools and stuff set out I have all the supplies next to the correct wheel make sure you have the correct supplies next to whatever you need um, I like to go ahead and put a block in right away and kick that back to where it doesn't have any rollback. My driveway does slope that direction a little bit. Go ahead and unlock your vehicle, open it up, go ahead and pop open the, the hood and push down on the emergency brake. So now that we're under here, we're gonna go ahead and jack up on this point. Your emergency brake is already on and so The goal is to get the tires in the air, which you will be able to see just on both sides. And you just keep pumping this up. And then we'll go ahead and set the jack stands. So you're gonna look for the frame of the vehicle. In fact, I'm gonna jack it up just a little bit more. So you go ahead and take your jack stand and put it up under the frame of the vehicle. It's probably hard to see that angle, but it's up under there. Same thing, go ahead and put it up underneath. The reason we do that is we want that to really hold and support that well. So now we'll come back here and slowly let this down and those jack stands will support the vehicle. Just like that. I did use a little block of wood, which that does sometimes get stuck on that piece right there. But you can see both wheels are off the ground, which is exactly what we want. They're supported with both of the jack stands. Make sure, make sure, make sure it's done that way. So to take off the wheel, 
22 millimeter impact gun. Take all five lug nuts off, put off to the side. I like to hit the top of the, the wheel there. Normally gets it off nice and easily. And then roll that out of your way. This vehicle hasn't been driven in about a week or two because we got quite a few things we're gonna be changing on it. So you will see a little bit of rust on there. That's totally fine. That'll come right back off. Um, we've already changed out. You can see the strut here. And so we're going to tackle the tie rod. I'm sorry, the ball joint down here first. We are going to need to go ahead and get the ball joint off first. So the ball joint is right here and it does have a castle nut on top of it. And you'll need a pair of pliers to get off the cotter pin. So you just pull the cotter pin straight out. And then the castle nut is sitting right on top of it. And it is a 19 millimeter. I'm gonna spray a little PB blaster on it. I also like to put a tray underneath it so it doesn't drip all over my driveway. And sometimes these things are on there really, really tight. So it does take a little bit of creative. Just used a 21 millimeter on top of the 19 and just pulled it. Um, you probably could use a breaker bar of some point if you have something big enough, like about two inches. But uh, this is what I had. So this is what I'm using. And it works. Just takes a little bit of... Uh, forcing it to to happen and that's a pretty big stud that it's on so it does take quite a few turns to to get it to go So this will get this bolt off of the control arm. We probably will have to use some kind of tool to lift up on it. I got one of these that works pretty well. Just be patient with it. You really can't get it off with a socket unless you got some kind of socket that I don't know about. You pretty much have to use a wrench like this. And if you found another way, put it in the comments. Tell me how you do it. If you found a way that's easier than this, but there it goes. That castle nut's almost off of there. And if you were confused by what I meant by a castle nut, it just allows that to go in there and sit and kind of lock it in place. So that's all it does. And it kind of looks like a castle, I guess. And so now that you have that, you do have to separate the ball joint out. And so there's tools like this. There's lots of different varieties of them, but the goal is to get around and be able to pop it off without damaging it. Now we are replacing this, so I'm not too worried. But if I wasn't replacing it, I would be a little more worried. I 
I believe this is a one and three eight size, which is kind of a bigger size. Oh, I did that backwards, that's why. And so the goal is that you don't damage the plastic, but it allows it to pop up. And do be careful, some of them do have a grease fill up spot on the bottom, depending on your make and model. And this has been on there for a long time, so this one's pretty hard to get off. So grab the pickle fork and put it right there. So if you have a sledge, sometimes that helps. Okay, I broke it. It didn't really drop much, but that's okay. But it does go up and down now. And you can see that right there. So after I loosen the other bolts, it should come off. I'm gonna show you how to take off this nut here. So if you grab a flathead, you need to bend this section back out. And it does come with a new nut, so I'm not too worried about if we damage that at all. And this is a 36 millimeter, which goes right on here. And we'll have to break that loose. So we'll take our handy impact gun, 36 millimeter. And I'm gonna, came all the way off. I am gonna put it back on a lot because we'll need that to knock out the center later. But you do wanna make sure you don't tighten it down with this. So now that you have this nut loose and your ball joint, I, did, I am replacing the ball joint, so I went ahead and took it off. I've already showed you how to do that, but I've already begun to install the new one, so don't worry about that. Um, but we do need to knock this out. And so there's a couple of ways you can do that. One of these hammers sometimes works. Sometimes you have to go a little stronger. Now I will say you wanna make sure this nut is still on there. It does come with a replacement nut. And you can see it as I'm hitting it, it is going back. And that is what we want to see because that will allow this knuckle to come forward. So I just spin it a couple of times and continue to hit it. If it's not coming out and it's really, really stuck, you may need like a mini sledgehammer or something like that. So I'm very careful with the sledgehammer if you're using that because um, you don't want to hit any of these studs. You will kind of ruin it. If you're afraid of doing that, you can actually go ahead and put on all of your nuts. Um, I have done that before when I've really had to whack it hard, but uh, normally it comes out pretty easy with just a little bit of persuasion.
So we'll see if this allows us to completely remove it or not yet. Nope, it's not letting us yet. We're getting close though. This is just a rubber mallet. So you can go ahead and start pulling this off to the side and your CV axle will just kind of drop out the back. Um, I'll show you a little different angle where you can see that it has dropped out the back and is movable now. At this point, I would recommend that you have some kind of pan to catch any potential transmission fluid that you might get out of here. And the goal is you gotta pry up back in this section right back here. And so I will have to get kind of at a weird angle, but I'm gonna to try to give you guys a good camera shot of exactly what I'm doing. So this is just a crowbar and I'm just gently pushing it and you see the transmission fluid leak out just a little bit that is pretty common so you don't want to push too hard because you don't want to ruin and that whole piece should just come straight out It looks like I'm about to lose about maybe a quart of transmission fluid. Not too bad. So I did want to show you the two next to each other. I did accidentally kind of pull this one out. This should be more compressed in here, but uh, they do look identical. This is a rebuilt version, which is the one I would prefer to use. Because a number of the aftermarket ones are not actually to the right size. So that's why I prefer to use the rebuilt on this part particularly. So we're gonna put the new CV axle in and you wanna make sure you line up the grooves properly. And once you're in, then you gotta push it in and actually pop it, which is gonna take some additional effort. There it went. So it's got a little clamp around it that you gotta get it into. And uh, now it's properly seated on there. And you can kind of take your hand and rub against it to make sure. Um, this one does come with a new one. And we're gonna start inserting it back in through the knuckle. And then you will want to make sure you line up you want to make sure you line up the threads properly so you do want to have it back a little bit to where you can see i'm going to give you a little different view so you can see um, you got to get these there it goes. Once the, the threads are lined up, you can start pushing this piece in. So you're gonna go ahead and make sure the ball joint is in the little socket, um, which it kind of just almost naturally fits in there. You may have to do a little bit of adjustment and then go ahead and put the castle ring on. You're gonna have a 19 millimeter. You do wanna make sure that you get this uh, pretty snug on there. It says that you're supposed to have 69 foot pounds of torque, but that's really hard to guesstimate how to do that 
Um, if somebody does know how to do that, please put it in the comment section below. Um, I'm just pretty much making it tight, and it does take a while to get this one on there. You just keep going at it um, and giving it a good hard oomph after it stops by hand just to make sure we're getting close to that 69 foot-pounds of torque. But I don't have any kind of torque stick or wrench that would allow me to be able to do that. You don't really have any room except to put a uh, wrench in there. So any help with that, that would be good. I'm not a professional mechanic, but I do a lot of my own repairs and help friends out as well. The next thing you need to do is go ahead and grab that little pin. I call it a cotter pin, but it's probably not technically one and go ahead and slide that across it. And that just helps lock that castle nut in um, to make sure it doesn't back off. You do not want your lower control arm coming off in the middle of driving. Go ahead and grab the nut and begin to spin it on by hand. You don't wanna just torque it down right away. And so that is a 36 millimeter. So you do wanna make sure that you get your 36 millimeter on there. And uh, we are gonna tighten it down with an impact gun. It is 240 foot pounds of torque. And so you're going to want to go ahead and make sure you put that down to spec and uh, that way it does not come off when you drive. But there's also one last step you'll do after you put that on. You will make sure that you go ahead and get a hammer and we're going to knock the uh, side of it in so that it doesn't have any potential to ever come off. So we will take the hammer and just whack that a few different times to make sure it does never come off. So go ahead and grab your tire and you're gonna put it back up so you can complete this side of your control arm. And so you pick it up and you're gonna put it and place it on the studs properly just to make sure it's aligned. You kind of look through and just kind of stick it on just like that. And then you grab each one of the lug nuts and I like to spin them on four or five times by hand to make sure I don't strip the uh, lug nuts themselves or the studs. Uh, replacing those studs is no fun. The lug nuts are pretty easy to change out. You can buy them pretty much anywhere, but uh, those studs do take a long time to replace. I've done it on one vehicle already and don't look forward to ever doing that again. Um, and I'm going to be using an impact gun, so it is important to make sure those are on there properly. I do have a torque stick. It's supposed to be 94. I believe this is a 100 foot pound torque stick. Um, I like to go in a star pattern as well. And so you're not just going around in a circle, but you kind of go back and forth just to ensure that they're on there properly. And you're going to want to do this multiple times until your torque stick completely stops. And so sometimes it's three or four different times around the entire tire. And then you are going ahead and done if you just wanted to do the one side of the control arm. But I encourage you to go ahead and do both of them and then make sure you get an alignment afterwards. So after your car is resting on jack stands, which you can't see they're underneath there, you can lower down your actual jack. You'll grab a 22 millimeter. You can either use a impact like this and just begin to, to take them off. Then go ahead and set these off to the side. And we'll go ahead and get the wheel off and we'll put that to the side as well. To give you a little bit better angle on this, I went ahead and turned the wheel as far as I could. Um, so you have just a little bit better access to see exactly what I'm doing on here. And we're going to go ahead and get this cotter pin out. So it's going to come off the back side, but you do have to kind of pull it right here and push off the back side. This one looks very strange. Save this. It does not come with a new one of these. So put that off to the side someplace safe. Next thing we're going to have to do is break this nut. This is a 19 millimeter and we're going to have to go ahead and break this nut off here. And it's going to take a lot of leverage. There it goes. If you could get a socket in there, it would make it a lot easier. But you really can't. This is about the only way. And it does take a while to get this bolt off. So just be patient. Take your time. 
I did end up putting my foot way up over here. I'm not sure if you saw that to just give me a little bit of extra leverage. Put it in the wheel well where I wasn't going to break anything. Which may seem kind of overkill, but you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So this is a castle nut. They will give you a new one of these and I would use the new one that is provided. And so we will be re not reusing that, but we will be reusing that cotter pin. So you gotta be creative, use one of these and uh, kind of just beat the snot out of it and push it up. Um, these pickle forks do work well, but it does take, I think a lot more energy and effort than what it probably should to pop this off. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it real quick with a little bit of uh, penetrating oil. So this is kind of an optional step, but sometimes it really does help to just get a little bit of penetration oil in there. Also put something under your vehicle. That way it can drip into it and you don't get it all over your driveway or onto rocks that go down into the ground. And just let that sit for a few minutes if you need to. And we're gonna try again to, to knock this thing out of there and get it to release. a sledgehammer as well see if I can get in and under Okay, that was it. Did you see that it finally released? It may not look like it released a lot, but that's all you need is that to just release a little bit and you're done with the pickle for it. So we're gonna go ahead and take this nut off. It is a 36 millimeter. And to get this nut off, you are gonna need a hammer and a flathead it has been knocked in, so we do need to push that back out just like that and bend it. We'll switch over to that 36 millimeter. Okay, we're not going to take it all the way off yet. We're just going to get it started so that's exactly what we want to do the new one does come with a new one of these so if you do mess up some of the threads you don't have to worry too much about that so after you have the ball joint off down below now I did put a new entire control arm on that's why you see the blue little cup down here uh, just so you know that needed replaced as well so there'll be a video coming out real soon or maybe already out on that one um, we need to go ahead and begin to knock this backwards um, so there's a couple ways you can do that because we're getting a new nut um, you can simply just pound on it this way like i did there or if you're a little more worried go ahead and put this on hit it a couple of times as you're spinning this and that 36 millimeter will just allow it to continue to get pressed back in there And you can see it's starting to go back. It might be a little more visible if I do it this way. So I am going to show you a couple of times actually physically hitting it in and kind of showing you what it's doing. And so you're just spinning it and hitting it back. And that will help get that CV out of there. And when you get to this point, just continue to smack on it and hit it back out of there. So this CV axle is held on by this nut, the threads here, and then back in the back there'll be a C clamp. Uh, you can't really see them most of the time, uh, but we will have to kind of pop that out to, to kind of bring it forward. And so then you just begin to 
and you can see how broken it is back there. You can see all the goop coming out of it. And so I will just continue to kind of pull this forward and kind of have to push that back a little bit. And this side will come right out just like that. And so that's exactly what we want it to do. And then we will get back in here. And sometimes because how broken this is, I might just be able to, yep, just pulled it out, but I pulled the boot off with it, which is not what you want. You can see just how damaged this one was. And so we'll have to get back there and pop that off, which won't be a problem. So let me show you what I just did there, because it's way too hard to show you underneath. So this is stuck inside the other. And so as that's in that shaft, this is your drive shaft CV axle, you have to hit the back side here. So what I had to use is a sledgehammer and a, about a 24 inch flathead screwdriver. And with that, I had to come up under the exhaust to where this sat right on here and I could knock it out. Just kind of imagine that. The exhaust is right here and you need to go up underneath and hit that backside and the whole thing did pop right out. And it does have this little flange here um, that does make it a little hard to see when you're getting out, but you will see some separation, which is nice. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the new drive shaft. You know what, I'm gonna switch sides on the camera. Maybe you have a little bit better view because there is this oil filter in the way and you may not have seen all that I just did there as well. And I apologize for that. You may have to remove the tie rod to get better access. This side in particular seems like it needs to come off. And so go ahead and get our screwdriver and pull out that cotter pin. I just put these tie rods on so it shouldn't be too difficult to get all of this off. And so just start with that flat head and get that cotter pin out. That's not what I wanted to do. So we're for sure gonna have to get a new cotter pin for that, but that's fine. So with your 21 millimeter on an impact, it should come all of the way off, which it did. So we wanna be really careful with this tie rod puller. We do not wanna damage the boot. This is a brand new part on this vehicle. So I want to be very careful with it. So it's a 19 millimeter. And that popped it up. And so this should give us a little bit more room and range to move this around. And so, so we're gonna go ahead and try again to put it back down and in there. There it goes. You heard that click. That's what you want to hear. Let go. We're going to go ahead and spin the nut off. I know you can't see me doing that right now. I was just trying to save the threads, but I just took the nut off. And we will begin to get it in place here. just going to kind of try your best to get the splines lined up which is not always the easiest there they go and I'm just going to go ahead and just lightly put this on just a few turns because we still have a lot of other things to put into place if you did not hear it pop that means it did not go over the clamp in the back and you need to make sure it does that that is super super important or else your drive shaft CV axle is not where it needs to be. And we've got a couple of other things we got to put together and then uh, we'll go ahead and tighten this down and knock in one of the sides where the nut is so it doesn't move. Let's go ahead and put the tie rod back on. And put the castle nut on. Don't drop it like I just did. 
there is a little extra grease in here because I already had put a new one on and I hadn't really got a set up yet because we haven't even driven it since then I'm gonna go and wipe my hands it goes to 40 foot-pounds on that castle ring castle nut Twenty one millimeter, there it was. And I'm just gonna grab a new cotter pin. Sometimes you do have to adjust if the cotter pin does not go right in. Which this one's not perfect, so I will need to adjust this just a touch. that did it sometimes it takes more than that nope probably gonna have to add a foot pound or two more just to uh, have the ability for that to turn that nut just a little bit more let's hope that did it because sometimes it's too much to It's close, but I'm gonna see if I can just kind of tap it through. I did, perfect. And I'm gonna put this cotter pin how the other one was. One was wrapped up over it like this, and then the other one was just kind of bent around the corner. Whatever pliers work best for you, just use. These needle nose work pretty well for bending, so do the other pliers. But I do like these pliers for kind of wrapping it around a nut a little better. So that right there worked really well. Um, you may want to top it off just to make sure you have enough grease in there. If you did lose a lot, I don't think I really will have much I'll have to put in, but I'll pull it a couple of times and yeah, it's still really full. That's good. I just put a couple extra in just to make sure. So now we're going to get to this ball joint. So you're going to have to push it down, remove the castle nut off the top of it and it just fell on the ground, that's fine. Remove this plastic cap that just kind of helps protect everything. So once you get it pushed back in, it should pop right up on top. You do have that new castle ring that we are gonna install. And go ahead and put that on hand tight. And that should be a 19 millimeter. Yes, it is. So this will take a minute to tighten down. There are specs to tighten this down, but you can't really get any kind of torque wrench or stick or anything like that on it. Um, so you do just want to be careful to make sure it's tightened down. The actual specs call it for 61 foot pounds of torque. Again, I can't really guesstimate what that is, except it's pretty tight after you've come to where it's kind of naturally stops by tightening it down. If you know a tool that you can tighten down with that is not crazy expensive, please uh, drop a comment and let me know what that is. That'd be super helpful, but uh, I just don't know of one. And again, this takes a few moments because you do just have to use your wrench. It's starting to get tight now. And that's real tight, so that's 61-ish foot-pounds-ish. You're gonna go ahead and put back in your cotter pin. This might have a different name than a cotter pin, but it's pretty much the same concept as a cotter pin. And my hands are really greasy right now, so this thing is just slipping everywhere. 
And so that just went right into place right there. Go ahead and grab the nut and begin to spin it on by hand. You don't want to just torque it down right away. And so that is a 36 millimeter. So you do want to make sure that you get your 36 millimeter on there. And uh, we are going to tighten it down with an impact gun. It is 240 foot pounds of torque. And so you're going to want to go ahead and make sure you put that down to spec. And uh, that way it does not come off when you drive. But there's also one last step you'll do after you put that on. You will make sure that you go ahead and get a hammer. And we're going to knock the uh, side of it in so that it doesn't have any potential to ever come off. So we will take the hammer and just whack that a few different times to make sure it does never come off. Go ahead and get the circles lined up with the studs. I like to go ahead and put these on by hand at least three or four, maybe five spins to make sure we're not going to strip them when we use the 22 millimeter with the impact gun with a 100 pound torque stick on it. So go ahead and turn it on. I do like to go in a star pattern when I do this. So at this point, you can go ahead and remove those two jack stands. Again, they're just that extra safety measure. These jack stands, they're pretty basic ones. Most of them have some kind of lever that you pull up on and, they, and then they collapse down. Next thing you're gonna do is go ahead, I go ahead and scoot this piece of cardboard back and out. Lower this down a little bit, turn it to the left just slowly, and everything kind of comes down. If this video was helpful, I encourage you to go ahead and like and subscribe. If you haven't uh, commented and you have questions, please go ahead and do so. Thank you guys so much for watching.